In this video, we'll review some basic concepts regarding the 12 lead EKG. We'll talk about things such as waveforms, grid paper, and lead orientation. Though I won't talk a whole lot about basic science things such as action potentials, I do want to briefly review the fundamentals of the cardiac conduction system. So let's go ahead and start there. The electrical activity of the heart starts in the sinoatrial node, which is located here in the right atrium. First we get atrial depolarization. which we see on our 12 lead EKG as a P wave. Next, the impulse makes it to the AV node, where it encounters a brief AV conduction delay before it's transmitted down the specialized conducting tissue of the his purkinje system to make it to the ventricles. So here's our impulse leaving the AV node. First, it goes down the his bundle, which bifurcates into the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch. On the left side, our left bundle branch divides into a left posterior fascicle and a left anterior fascicle. While all this is going on, our ventricular myocardium depolarizes on both sides simultaneously, forming our QRS complex. Following ventricular depolarization, we get repolarization, which is reflected in our T wave. Now let's look at our 12 lead EKG tracing. The 12 lead EKG is printed on graph paper that allows us to visualize time in the X axis and voltage in the Y axis. Each tracing lasts for 10 seconds in duration. We have 12 leads present up here on the top of our tracing. It's best to think of the leads as cameras that allow us to look at the electrical activity of the heart from different angles. Here on the left side, we have our frontal plane leads. The frontal plane leads are also known as the limb leads. They are derived from three electrodes that are placed on the body, and they let us look at the electrical activity of the heart in the frontal plane. We'll talk more about this in a minute. Here on the right side here, we have our precordial leads. The precordial leads are also known as the chest leads, and they're derived from six electrodes that are placed on the chest. They let us see what's going on in the antero-posterior plane. And down here, we have our rhythm strip. On most EKGs, lead 2 is used as a rhythm strip, though you'll see a number of tracings that use other leads, such as V1. The rhythm strip can be used to help determine the heart rhythm. In this case, we can see lead 2 over the entire 10 seconds of the tracing, as opposed to the small snapshot we get to see up here. Now let's take a closer look at our grid paper. You'll notice that the grid is divided into large boxes and small boxes. Looking at the x-axis, which represents time, one large box is equal to 0.2 seconds of time, or 200 milliseconds. Each large box is divided again into five small boxes, each lasting 0.04 seconds of time, or 40 milliseconds. Now looking at our y-axis, for amplitude, each large box is equal to 0.5 millivolts of amplitude, while each small box is equal to 0.1 millivolts of amplitude. Sometimes it's easier to just call each small box in the y-axis a millimeter. Thus, this large box I would just call 5 millimeters. Okay, now let's talk in a little more detail about the leads that make up our EKG tracing. You'll remember that here on the left side we have our frontal plane leads, uh, which are also known as the limb leads, and here on the right side we have our precordial leads, which are also known as the chest leads. Okay, now this diagram is what we refer to as the hexaxial diagram. It gives us the spatial orientation of our six frontal plane leads relative to each other. 
It's easiest to think of the frontal plane leads or the limb leads as representing cameras that look at the electrical activity of the heart, each from a different angle within the frontal plane. If you have an impulse that's moving towards the camera, in this case, let's say this dot is the camera, then you'll get an electrical deflection that's positive. Similarly, if you have an impulse that's moving away from the camera, you get an electrical deflection that's negative. So for example, let's say you have an impulse that represents a wave of depolarization moving towards lead two. Because the impulse is moving towards lead two, if you looked in lead two, you would see an electrical deflection that's positive. Now on the other hand, if you looked in AVR, which is almost opposite to lead two, you would get an electrical deflection that's negative simply because the impulse is moving away from AVR. And similarly, if you looked in each of these other leads, you would see a different take on what the same electrical deflection looks like. We'll talk in more detail about things like axis and isoelectric later, but this is just to help you understand that the leads are all looking at the same thing, it's just each is looking at it from a different angle. Now let's remove these markings for a moment and just look at this hexaxial diagram. In order to interpret EKGs, it's important that you've memorized the location of these six frontal plane leads. And so you should be able to reproduce this diagram from memory, kind of like this. So lead one goes over here at zero degrees. Perpendicular to it is AVF, which is down here at positive 90 degrees. Two and three come 30 degrees off of the vertical and they form mirror images of each other. AVL and AVR come 30 degrees off of the horizontal and they form mirror images of each other. So it's important to be able to reproduce this from memory in order to understand things like axis. So let's go back to our diagram. So leads 1 and AVL over here, along with V5 and V6, make up what we call the lateral leads. They let us see things from the aspect of the lateral portion of the left ventricle, which is supplied by the circumflex artery. Meanwhile, down here, leads 2, 3, and AVF represent the inferior leads. They give us a view of the inferior wall of the left ventricle, as well as the right ventricle. This area is supplied by the right coronary artery. Now let's look at our precordial leads, or our chest leads. The precordial leads, V1 through V6, allow us to look at the electrical activity of the heart in the anteroposterior plane. V1 and V2 are located on either side of the sternal edge at the fourth intercostal space. V4 is located at the fifth inner space along the midclavicular line. V6 is located horizontally in line with V4, but along the mid-axillary line. V1 and V2 are referred to as the septal leads. V3 and V4 are the anterior leads. The anterior leads allow us to take a closer look at the anterior portion of the left ventricle, which is supplied by the left anterior descending artery. Note that sometimes V1 and V2 are included with V3 and V4 in comprising the anterior leads. As we mentioned before, V5 and V6, along with 1 and AVL, comprise the lateral leads. The lateral leads give us a look at the lateral portion of the left ventricle, which is supplied by the circumflex artery. Knowing these lead distributions is important. If you come across an EKG of a patient having an acute ST elevation MI, and you see that there's mostly ST elevation in leads V3 and V4, you should know to call it an anterior ST elevation MI. Okay, that's all I've got for leads. Be sure to tune in next time when we introduce you to a method of systematic EKG interpretation, and we talk about things like rate and rhythm.